we're over 50%. So 53% of our community is Hispanic in Victorville. And my desires are to help the residents to bring the services and the resources that our population needs. This is over 50%. Local government in Spanish, translation services, and local documents in Spanish. I've been in office for the last, for the last five months, and I've accomplished at least one goal so far. Coffee with a cop is the first step to bridge the gap between law enforcement She looks embarrassed. Now I'm working to incorporate safety with Spanish speaking and radio stations. This is Blanca Although Gomez, I'm also the creepy corrupt city councilwoman. Been She's been under down. censure in our Victorville. Community will continue now she to fight for our needs and our and we will continue to unite with national efforts. To meet the challenge okay, this is an event of La Raza activists to take over California. My current situation in Victorville has been thus far. They passed censorship, censorship policies limiting my time to speak, but that will not stop me from uniting in efforts that we all have in common goals. Right now, I'm prepared to embrace this journey for the next four years. My re-election is in 2020. Oh. Oh. I join with each one of you to wake that Mexican voting giant that oh. we just expressed. Oh my God. I am ready to prevail with each one of you. So I ask each of the leaders to please unite with me in the city of Victorville so that we can create this movement all over our nation starting locally at each location that we have. There's a reason why I received over 8,600 votes I'm so glad that I started to meet a lot of the mentorship that I'm getting here. And it's my honor to be at one of these great speaking events at this conference. So I'm getting empowered just as I hear each one of you. Thank you so much for having me here. Ooh, we'll be there, Blanca. We'll be there. Ooh. Abuela. I'm subsidizing your EDD for our medical care. Our council member from the city of Fontana, and please keep your comments to action recommendations. I don't see him. Entonces, Victoria. So then we'll go on to the next person, Chris Garcia. Where's Chris? Donde esta Chris? He got caught in a zipper. <laughs> <laughs> Gary doesn't like that I mentioned the zipper. He doesn't like that. But. <laughs> Where are you from? What if you're not Mexican? Okay, I you. Don't tell him, don't tell him. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. <laughs> Maso ye. So, uh, my name is Luis Medina, I'm consul for protection of Mexicans. And I'm the first of the country of Mexico. Uh, si, I'm si. here on behalf of Consul Salomon Rosas, the chief consul of the country of Mexico, who sends his regards. Okay, so everybody, I'm sorry I didn't explain it. We're at UC or Riverside right now. This is a Mexican state summit. They're about planning how to take over California. That's what's happening. So you're talking about illegal Hey, let the man speak, man. What's the matter with you? We're Americans. That includes defending Mexican oh? nationals. That's an illegal alien, right? You're about to get deported by the The of Mexico has been at the forefront. And making sure our Mexican nationals are aware that we're here to assist them. The significant capacity of the government of Mexico tries to deal The significant capacity of the government of Mexico in the U.S. is notable. Uh, it is the only government with the largest 
network of countries in the U.S. Sorry. 50 representations of Mexico are here in the U.S. plus its embassy because it is uh, or it represents how important is the relationship among all countries. Almost one third of our representations of uh, growth. In these consulates, we have opened a focus center. Those are known in Spanish as Centros de Defensoría. <coughs> in the beginning of these years, the beginning of these years, of these years sorry, these uh, focus centers were opened. I would like to show you some of the work wow. our consulates have done with these advocacy centers. No 250 <laughs> workshops with the help of immigration and criminal or, uh, or authorities who specialize in criminal law. 218 workshops discussing emergency contingency plans. 280 workshops promoting individuals to inform US citizens. 945 Know Your Rights workshops, 315 Immigration Diagnostic workshops, screenings, but also uh, the term which is used for these type of uh, workshops. That is more than 2015 workshops have been done since the beginning of this year. We estimate that more than 172,000 Mexicans living in the U.S. have benefited from this from these uh, workshops. Also, the government of Mexico has expanded this call center known as CIAM, Centro de Formación y Atención y Asistencia Mexicanos, what? which is based or located in, in Arizona. Oh my God, that's outrageous. Hours. In the line allows individuals to get assistance over the phone. Illegal. questions ask, <laughs> where can I locate my missing loved one after I see to them? What are my rights in the U.S.? What should I do in the event of a deportation? What program does the government of Mexico offer if I were to be deported? Where can I find the nearest workshops in my area? Do you advise for, from immigration attorneys, among other services? As you see, 24 our goal center is young, which is capable of handling various questions over the phone without putting our nationals at risk if they have to travel apart from their nearest council. The CM Call Center took more than one million calls in 2016, and just this year it has assisted more than 1.5 million Mexican foreign citizens. With that, I will, I will end. And just to highlight that the government this guy is teaching illegals how to avoid deportation. That's criminal. The dialogue. Regardless, the uh, no difference among uh, different parties. And now more than ever, uh, one of the most important tools diplomacy has to not be neglected, and that's dialogue. Even though there's uh, no difference among, among the parties, and we will continue defending the interests of Mexico abroad, and we're going to do it with very clear uh, principles, objectives, and limits, as long as our dignity allows it. So, thank you very much. Have any dignity to your our law. Follow our laws. De Guatemala? Come on. Oh my God. This guy's, he's the consulate from Guatemala. This is Good bullshit. morning to everyone. I want to start with a phrase. A phrase that is from Voltaire. I think that maybe I hate what I am listening from some of you, but I will defend with my life the right that you have to say. This country is made the basis of respect. I think for our laws are a room where people think very different. <laughs> but we have the respect to share our ideas and to go out from here and be, be as friends. We, we, think, we, we think different, but we can share our opinions. Um, our position in our Guatemalan government is people from Guatemala, 
there are 3 million Guatemalans living in the United States. The 60% are immigrants, illegal immigrants, 60%. We know that we need a reform. Our government is working in Washington, D.C. to know and to see if we can get... See, they're struggling with illegal immigration, too. That is given. You know that the system is broken. These no. people from Guatemala are looking only for a better future, for a better place to live, for a better place in which they can work and they can attend and they can assess their families. Migration is a human right. People have the right to see the best place for living in which they want, they can. Yes? No. Yeah. Lie. They don't agree with you. Immigration is not a human right. You can have a family, you can have security. That's a human right. No. No, it's not. In Guatemala, we have 15 consulates right now. 15 consulates to serve 3 million people. In June, we're going to become the second country that has the most consulates abroad, just behind Mexico. Because our government thinks that the importance to give protection and to give this assistance for people from Guatemala live here is important for our government. I have the consul to Guatemala in San Bernardino, in California, and just you know, in Southern California live, is the second largest region around the world in which lives Guatemalans. That's the importance of having a second consulate in Southern California. With the consulate of Guatemala in Los Angeles and the consulate of Guatemala in San Marino, we are serving 1,800,000 Guatemalans. 1,800,000. So that, that's our vision, to serve 000. and protect our people. That's the only reason we are here in this country, to protect and to serve our nationals. I want to thank you, Dr. Armando Navarro, UC Riverside, for this event. I want to thank you, all the panelists, and to you for all the attention. Thank you very much. Boo! Legally! Americans first! Aquata! Americans first! Americans first! You were. The presentations by the different people that are here from the leadership. Now we want to ask everybody else here in the audience to participate. Yes. So we're going to ask everybody who wants to speak to please raise their hand and maybe come up here and make a, a, a uh, question to the audience, to the panel. I want a slight modification. Yes. Only because of the interest of time, because we did get a late start. Whose fault is that? I know. However, there are no questions to the panel. There are only recommendations, and we're going to save all those recommendations after the second panel. We'd like our second panel to come up, please. Okay, thank you very much for all the panelists. Oh, darn. You, you were married to a, a, a Central American, weren't you, Chanel? Central American, right? Belize. Central American. I'm really being... Trying to be very but don't disrupt our... No, no? You know, we're not. This guy attacked me. This guy stood in front of me. It's, for, it's First Amendment. Wow. 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 I got that. That was racist. Consiste. All right. All of you who are with Trump and who want to stay, raise your hand. We don't want any comments well, out of you. Gary, it's kind of too late for me. You can sit. You can observe. And, and that's the extent. Be quiet. And we don't sit. And this guy was walking. Okay, so that means. This is our meeting. Okay, it's again, again, young man. This but is our meeting. Well, thank you. We're public property. To it is public property, though. Your right to be here. You're on public property. However, it's our meeting. 
Okay, yeah. it's our meeting too. Yo soy americano también. And this guy was standing in front of me, so please make sure he stays seated. Yeah, you. I can stand any time I want. Actually, you can't. You're disrupting the speakers. He's disrupting the meeting. Stop disrupting Not the meeting. Not as much as you. Put your hand down. You're blocking people behind you. I agree. I absolutely agree. Say hi to Kevin De Leon. Yay, Kevin. Yay. It says, go fire Kevin. Governor of California. Exacto. No lo puedo dejar, no puedo decir nada de lo que dicen los... You know, I can't... Man, I can't hear it tampoco. They gotta, they gotta make comments about everything anybody says, you know, okay? You can sit in silence. We don't want any comments. If you feel the need to make a comment, you will be escorted out. Hmm. It's about time. Maria, I, I would like a security officer to come down here. Okay, you said that? Danny, we'll try to take care of it. All of you, please. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Skipping. to um, present the panelists that will be um, discussing the uh, proposals and strategies for uh, resistance and also to uh, build the unity and power so that we can not only defend our community, but uh, we um, move forward in uh, uh, generating the power that we have been talking about. Okay, because we do have power to change and to resist the, um, the uh, war that has been declared among our people. I want to say that I am Chicana. My uh, father was born in New Mexico, and my mother was born in Zacatecas, and therefore I am Chicana, and that's why we're saying Aquí estamos y no nos vamos. USA, USA, USA. So I have the first panelist is Luz Gallegos, and she is the executive director of the Coltec. Coltec. Muchas gracias a todos. Everybody for being here, and um, I know a lot of us don't agree, no, but um, I, I do respect everybody's comments, but I do not agree with uh, a lot of you that are here. Um, oh, okay. All, I do want to say that immigrants are a significant contributor to our economy, both as consumers and taxpayers, through sales, through sales, property, income, and other taxes. So our um, immigrant community Unless you talk about is legal. Uh, economical force to the United States of our, uh, uh, to the United States. Um, I do. Uh, I really don't want to uh, talk about strategy or anything right now. But what I do want to elevate is what we're seeing in the grassroots. Uh, working with a nonprofit um, organization ever since election, it's been nonstop. Our community is very is going through some very hard times. We continue um, hearing from kids. We continue hearing from families. A lot of our kids do not want to go to school because they fear. Whose fault is that? Uh, they, they fear. They continue having that fear of their parents being separated and deported. Well, whose fault is that? So for us, for, for us be, um, hearing this and, and listening to our communities on and off about the fear that the, the terror that, has caught, that this uh, new administration has caused us is very, it, it, it really um, hurts us and it touches our hearts. Why? Because our we we're, we're all about against we're all against the, we're all against terrorism. But what's happening with the with, with this new administration is really creating talking terror within our community. No, it's not. Um, ahorita lo que lo que estoy compartiendo para muchos de los compañeros que vinieron que no hablan español, uh, inglés, uh, estamos viendo la necesidad de un pueblo. Ahorita tenemos mucho temor entre nuestras comunidades. Estamos viendo a los niños que muchos no quieren ir a la escuela por el temor. 
de sus padres, de llegar y no están ahí sus padres. Ahorita se está haciendo mucho trabajo en la base para educar y dar a conocer nuestros derechos. Pero más que nada se está haciendo una conciencia política entre nuestras comunidades, la conciencia política que tenemos que estar cívicamente activos, tenemos a las personas que se pueden hacer ciudadanos, hay que hacerlos ciudadanos y tenemos que salir a votar, porque es la manera que vamos a pelear, a pelear sin violencia uh, para todo lo que está haciendo nosotros. That man in the green told me that California is not a part of the United States. Shouldn't it be in English? Yeah, I agree. Liz Espinosa asks a great question. Why don't we cross the border? Oh that guy said the Rialto residents have five years to live. You. Estamos en la base, estamos 